G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, it's Friday night here in Australia, so the weekend's upon us and I'm waiting on this candlestick. What is it going to do? Is it going to roll over and go lower or is it going to push higher and hopefully be a breakout as opposed to, yeah, a rollover? It's not looking promising right now. But again, it's it's early uh, over in the States, whereas where it usually kind of makes a difference. But here in Australia, it's Friday night and that's not looking good. I am concerned that we're not going to break above this trend line and we're going to roll over and go lower. And look, if we do go lower, if we sort of zoom out a little bit, this is really, really where our kind of, you know, next level of support is. And funny enough, this level of support at around 9,100 actually marries up with the 200 day moving average. Now, traditionally, in bull markets, we've never gone below the 200 day moving average, at not least in a full big candle. We've had it wick below at times, but never below in full candles. So the 200 day moving average, if it's to roll over and break, this is really our last kind of hope before, I guess, you know, either we're in a bear market or it's just done something different from before. So it's not like everything's lost if we go below, but we'll have to wait and see. Again, hopefully, like if it does roll over, it just simply bounces off this bigger trend line. But if we do go through, I am expecting us to come down to the 200 day moving average and hopefully we'll bounce off there. But we'll just have to wait and see. At the moment, it's not looking good on the daily chart, but I suppose, you know, depending on where you are, it's either early here in Australia or it's late though. So we don't have too long left before that uh, candle is validated or invalidated, depending on how you want to look at it. Let's go have a look at the hourlies. Let's see if there's something in there that might tell us what might be happening. Well, it's still not looking good. Same kind of thing on the hourly. I mean, we do have a little bit of green here over the last couple of hours. So, you know, who knows? But look at the volume. There's not a whole lot of volume there right now. So at the moment, I am definitely concerned. Get back out to the daily candles that this is probably going to roll over and then we're going to see another down leg. And again, to where we were before, which is roughly this 200 day moving average. Oh, well, what can you do? I guess in the next few hours, we'll know. Look, it could just trade sideways. It's not that it couldn't. But at the moment, it's just not looking really promising. And again, this is our volume down here for the day. It's not looking too promising. Traditionally, on weekends, the market sells off a little bit. So if it does, yeah, maybe we fall over, test this, uh, you know, this greater trend line here, or, you know, maybe even come down and test that. Who knows? Let's go over and have a look. The market cap, it's up a little bit, which is good. But again, you know, Friday's upon us. Traditionally, the market sells off a little bit over the weekend. It's not always immediately on the Friday. Sometimes it can be immediately on the Friday. Other times it can be on the Saturday. And other times it can take till the Sunday for it to happen. And other times it just absolutely pumps on a weekend. So again, you know, waiting on bated breath to see what Bitcoin's going to do. But it's not going to surprise me if we go down and test that greater line. Or, you know, even worst case scenario, we test that 200 day moving average. But as long as we can bounce off that, of the 200 day moving average then you know we're still in line for it to be a bull market but time will tell but something interesting here i'm massively bullish on DeFi. i think it really is the future of cryptocurrencies and particularly this bull run anyway but there's so many scams out there at the moment i'm not touching any of these new products at the moment and it's not to say that they're no good you know Yearn Finance has turned out to be pretty good. I still don't uh, have anything in Yearn Finance. Curve Finance looks like it's pretty good. But uh, Sushi uh, Swap, I'm not touching that. You know, I wouldn't touch it with your money. Uh, you know, Sashimi and all these yams and Yam 2 and all the rest of it. I'm not touching them. And here we go. DeFi Project YFDEX finance vanishes with 20 million of investors funds just two days after its launch that's it take your money and they're gone this reminds me of the ICOs that were happening in 2017 same thing some of them you know would put out this hoo-ha about this great new uh, ICO that was coming out and literally within days within days your money was gone this is that all over again 
just everything's going to be all about DeFi. If you can't find someone who's willing to put a face to that project, I would steer well clear of it. Just, yeah, if, if, if they've put so much time and effort into it, why wouldn't they put their face to it? Everyone likes to use the whole Bitcoin thing and be like, oh, you know, you don't have to put your face to it. Outside of Bitcoin, yes, you do. <laughs> if you're not willing to put your face to it, a name to it, and for people to talk to and know who to uh, chat to when something's going wrong with it, then it's 99% probably a scam. Not 100%. There could be another person out there who does all the research and pulls off you know, something similar to Bitcoin and just wants to stay anonymous, but the chances are just so low. So be very careful in the DeFi space, especially with these new protocols. You know, Stick to the true tried and tested. If we are truly in a bull market like I believe we are, Whatever prices there are in the good projects that have been around for a while, they've got exponential growth ahead of them. Could it be 10x from here? Possibly still could be. Could it be 20, 30, 40, even 100x from here? Maybe not 100x, but hey, look, we just don't know. You know, whatever happens with, you know, all the stimulus checks and everything, you know, if we go to uh, printing money to infinity and all the rest of it, look, they could have 100x, 1000x in them. We just don't know. But be very, very careful in the DeFi, ladies and gentlemen. Again, not financial advice, but I like Kyber Network. I like Aave. I like Ren. I like Synthetics Network. They're the kind of projects that I've put some uh, capital into, uh, and I'm fairly confident that they're going to be around. But again, that you know, it could all change. A bug could come out in the system, but it's just unlikely that the... Uh, the people who've started up the programs are simply going to run off with your money. They've been around for too long uh, and there's people that you can put faces to. This, I'm going to say, there was probably a never a face that you could put to this project. And last but not least, so the US Senate, they've rejected a stimulus package. And one of the reasons they rejected it is the money's not going directly to people. And this could be a good thing for Bitcoin. We'll just have to wait and see. If the money goes directly to people, and it's not this long drawn out process, i.e. the money's in their bank really, really quickly, they're probably gonna put the money into stocks and Bitcoin and things like that. And so that might be the upside. So it's a bit of a downside that this stimulus package was um, you know, rejected. Yes, that's gonna be uh, not great for the price in the short term, but in the long term, it's likely that they will just approve another one later, and hopefully this time, it will be with money going directly into people's bank accounts and things like that. And as it says here, this could be the catalyst uh, for Bitcoin to pump up, or it could be a severe catalyst, and it goes the other way if there is no further stimulus packages put out there. Well, Friday night here, I don't know what else to say. Again, I'm just waiting to see what this chart does. This is really it for me. Is this going to roll over and really you know, drop down to the low side? And again, particularly fill that CME gap. Talked about it a lot and not all CME gaps are filled, but most of them are. It's 90 something percent, which is basically nearly all of them. So the chances are it's probably going to be filled, but it do, it's not a guarantee. And really, if it does, fall over. I'm hoping that it comes down and bounces off here, which is around that $9,600 at the moment. Fill the CME gap and then we start to push up, but it could go lower. And again, the 200 day moving average, really for if we're in a confirmed bull market, basing on previous history, we don't want to go below that. It could wick below it, sure, but we couldn't have a close below it. That would really be either something different, could still be a bull market, but just a new bull market that we haven't seen before. But traditionally, that's not happened before. Well, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. There were some gains to be made there. And I'll see you next time.